Good morning and welcome to our worship on this Mother's Day. Praise the Lord for our mothers. Now, thank you, Becky, for that prelude, Supper Time, a favorite of many mothers. Now, to help us celebrate Mother's Day and to acknowledge our mothers, we have several uh, submissions to include in our video today, so enjoy. Good morning, everybody at Whetstone. Sorry about the mask, but... I don't want to expose anybody on this Mother's Day. This poem is called Mothers vs. COVID. She wakes up early every day, not because she wants to, but the children are ready to play. Seven days a week with no time off. She wishes she could just go with hubby and play some golf. She gazes out the window at her one surviving iris. The others have all died because of the virus. Her mind snaps back to the situation at hand. It's time for breakfast, which the children demand. After that, more playtime. What shall we do? How about shoots and ladders? Hey, Mom, get down on the floor. Once it was fun, but now it's deplorable. I'll take them to grandmother's. I'll call her and ask. But last time, the kids freaked out because of her mask. I dare not expose her to the dreaded pandemic. Is it re for real or just a gimmick? So off to grandmother's, the children I'll take. I feel a little stir crazy. I just need a break. I'll stop on the way and fill up with gas. Oh, I just remembered. It's time for their class. Online classes. It sounds so easy. Just watch the computer, but it turns out pretty cheesy. Nothing works as it should. It was supposed to be simple. Hey, Mom, is this thing a pimple? Now, children, concentrate. Let's get it done. Then she wonders why she didn't stop at one. The government says we are under quarantine. Tell that to a five-year-old. I'm sure she'll know what you mean. Have a lot of meals that come from a sack. And I'm the only one wanting a nap. All the days run together. They all seem the same. All really we have is China to blame. So this Mother's Day poem is one for the ages. Too bad our homes seem more like cages. Next year will be different. We'll look back and say, I really appreciate this virus-free day. Happy Mother's Day. Don't forget your flowers on the way out. Oh, wait a minute, they all froze. Never mind. Happy Mother's Day anyway. Hey, Whetstone, that was Here I Am to Worship. It was one of the first songs I ever learned to play, and I can't wait to worship with you soon. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tell me so. Little one to him belong, safe or weak, but he is strong. 
Hey everybody at Whetstone. Hello everybody. It's been a long time since we've seen everybody. Yeah, we really miss you guys and we hope to go back to church soon. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord. Bless his name. Proclaim good tidings of his salvation from day to day. That's from Psalm 96, first and second verses. Uh, this next hymn is one of my mother's favorites of the sacred hymns. Happy Mother's Day. everyone. In 2005, Sandy Newman came up with an idea of submitting a book of Mother's Day original poems, and they were to be written by our church family. So here are two poems from that booklet. The first one is my contribution, From Your Daughter with Love. I had a mom, a special mom, who meant the world to me. She cooked my meals, she helped me spell. She showed me middle C. My face was clean, my clothes were neat, but mom did not stop there. It takes much more than soap and food to show a child you care. Vacation Bible school and busy bees brought Jesus to my mind. But it was mom and her constant prayers that showed me a faith that I could find. So thank you, mom, for all the ways you showed your love was true. The years have passed. The world has turned. So in heaven, I'll next see you. And the next contribution is from Chet McCord, mother of mine. She was from the old school. The man she married came first, and she lived by that golden rule, which she practiced and rehearsed. Her family was never neglected. She showered them with loving care. If her good deeds were all collected, you would see she did more than her share. She made our rules to live by, 
and she was there to see them through. If we sometimes ask her why, she took the time to make sure we knew. Her discipline was done with words. She didn't need the back of her hand. She taught us about the bees and birds in a way that we would understand. God knew what was needed in this world of strife and care. In my mother, he succeeded, for he gave her love to spare. She made me what I am today, for she made me toe that line. I miss her much in every way, that wonderful mother of mine. Thank you, Chet. I miss for the million things you gave me. All means only that you have grown old. Tea is for the tears you shed to save me. H is for your heart of purest gold. E is for your eyes with love light shining. R means right and right you'll always be. Put them all together, they spell mother. A word that means the Isn't that fun? Praise the Lord. Uh, let's have a prayer together. Gracious Lord, we thank you that you are God. We thank you for all your love that you've shared with us. This worship that we offer you today, we give you our hearts because you've given us so much. In Jesus' name, amen. We're going to sing together that wonderful hymn, Because He Lives. sent his son. They called him Jesus. He came to love, heal, and forgive. He lived and died to buy my
true because he lives there's a lot of messages of fear that come at us every day but when we know that christ lives and he lives in our hearts and he's watching over us and caring for us it casts out fear so that we can live with confidence in him knowing that he is taking care that he has our best interest in mind how wonderful that is thank you lord we want to thank each of you who've sent in your gifts. We appreciate that. And we so look forward to the time when we can come together again. And uh, we are planning in two weeks from today to have opportunity to those who feel comfortable, not anybody who's feeling sick, please, but to be able to come together, still maintaining a safe distance, but worshiping in each other's presence. How marvelous that will be. And our tentative plan is March 24th. We won't be doing Sunday school that day, May 24th. <laughs> huh. Anyway, we'll have more on that as we go along. But for now, let's come before the Lord in prayer, trusting in him, knowing that he is the one that cares for us. Would you pray with me? Oh Lord, how we praise you and how we rejoice in you that you are the one who rose from the dead and that because you are alive, we know that there's nothing in all creation that will ever be able to separate us from your wonderful love. Not life nor death, not angels nor demons or principalities or powers, no sickness, no weakness, neither night or day, will ever separate us from you because you dwell right inside of us. And we're so thankful for that, Lord, we rejoice in it. It gives us a song to sing. And as we sing to you, Lord, we have confidence in bringing our concerns, bringing our prayers. We continue to pray for our nation we pray for our world, and we ask, O oh Lord, that uh, you will grant mercy. We pray for those who are suffering, and particularly those who are suffering with the COVID-19 virus. We ask, O oh God, that you would touch and heal. We ask, O oh God, that you would give wisdom to doctors and uh, those on the front line of caring, that uh, they will give the treatment that will work the best. We pray for patience for those who are recovering. We pray, Lord, that you will give protection for the doctors, nurses, custodians, nurses' aides, technicians, those who are administering the tests, uh, the paramedics, uh, firefighters, and policemen, and all others who are in the front line of danger Give them your protection, Lord. We pray for those working in the stores, that you will grant them protection, help them to always do the wise thing for self-protections. And Lord, we pray for those who are uh, entrusted with making decisions about uh, how fast we proceed and what avenues we proceed as far as public health. We pray your guidance to our governor and the president and vice president and others who are making decisions, those who are entrusted with those tough things that 
We don't know what is the best, but Lord, we try. And we pray that you'll give wisdom in fine-tuning along the way to either slow down if need to or pick it up if need to. Lord, help us in doing it the right way. And we pray for those who are researching for treatments, for vaccines. Pray that you'll give them your wisdom. Lord, we pray for all those who are suffering. We know there are many sicknesses that continue. We pray for those who are facing all kinds of sicknesses, heart conditions. And, uh, Lord, we ask your healing touch, your strength to be with them. We pray that you will grant recovery. We pray, Lord, for those who are suffering emotionally, for those who are suffering mentally, feeling cut off and isolated, discouraged and depressed. We pray, that, Lord, that you will touch them and let your light shine upon them that they may be able to look up and have hope. We pray all these in the name of Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior, who taught us to pray using the words, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Hi, my dear church family. Oh, how I miss all of you. Of course, being a, a hugger, I miss those hugs, of course. Who knows before we can start doing that again. But, oh my. What a great day it's going to be when we can all get together again. Praise the Lord. Take care, be safe, and know that you're loved. Good morning, Wisdom family. Happy Mother's Day to all you beautiful mothers out there. Uh, Steve asked me to read from 2 Timothy uh, chapter 1, verses 3 through 5. I thank God whom I serve as I did my ancestors with a clear conscience as I remember you constantly in my prayers night and day as I remember your tears I long to see you that I may be filled with joy I am reminded of your sincere faith a faith that dwelt first in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice and now I am sure dwells in you as well again happy Mother's Day have a good day I love you all Bye. Thank you, Connie, for reading the scripture for us. Uh, and as we celebrate this Mother's Day, what a sweet day it is, a sweet holiday. It's hard not being together, but maybe the old saying is true that absence makes the heart grow fonder, and we can have even fonder memories of our mother than otherwise. May is a month of remembering, and today we remember Mom, and it's my hope that as we remember Mom, it will help us to be an A-plus for him. Not being perfect or measuring up to some external standard, but giving God an A-plus effort because we love him and we know how much he loves us. Mothers have such a tremendous influence in this world. They're the first example that we get of what love means. They help to shape our values, our goals, the way we think about what's important, even years after they're gone. And sometimes their influence increases the longer that we've been without her. Yet when you look at what moms actually do, what fills their day, it can seem like not very important. Chores, endless chores, cleaning up after somebody else's mess, a series of little things. Yet, many things in this world are very small. A water molecule, so tiny 
And yet when it comes together and forms an ocean, how grand and glorious. Or the smallest atom that we have, hydrogen, just one proton, one electron. And yet who would ever say that the sun is less because it's made up of hydrogen atoms? At its core, motherhood is all about sacrifice and service. And that is the core of all of love. That's why when we see mothers, we see something of God because God is love. The scripture today, as Paul is talking to his uh, young Timothy Young, compared to Paul. Paul is writing at the end of his life. Paul had met Timothy on his first missionary journey and Timothy was one of those converts on that first trip along with his family. And on Paul's second journey, a year or so later, he took Timothy along with him as an apprentice to teach him deeper the ways of God and to train Timothy in becoming a pastor teacher himself. Sort of like a guru would take on a disciple or a Jedi would take on a young Paduan. Paul and Timothy had traveled together for almost 25 years at this point. And surely in that time, Paul had a tremendous influence on the faith development of Timothy. But as he reflects on it, he thinks about those seeds planted by his mother and grandmother and names them by name. Lois, Eunice. And can see that the fruit being born in Timothy's life is a result of those seeds that were planted. And for many of us, our first glimpse of a sincere faith was through our mother. The songs that they sang to us even while we were babies, the Bible stories that they read, teaching us bedtime prayers. But more than that, seeing them take a casserole to a neighbor who was struggling, watching as they pulled themselves together to go to choir practice and then came home with a smile on their face, seeing how they handled grief and disappointment in their own life, receiving their encouragement to stick with a project, an assignment, and then seeing them tackle a difficult chore and actually complete it. Or maybe seeing the smile on their face or hearing a tune that they were humming as they were folding the laundry. Did you see a sincere faith in your mother? Well, no mom is perfect. Because none of us are. All of us have our struggles. I can certainly remember the time when my brother and I started fighting in the kitchen while mom was fixing supper and she turned around with a butcher knife in her hand. Boy, we settled down real quick. But some moms, I know, get lost in their struggle, at least for a time. But remember that no mom is perfectly imperfect either. Look for the glimmers of light because there is something in each of them like the dew on the morning grass that sparkles. It's a reflection of the sun and the beauty and the goodness that we see in others is a reflection of the glory and goodness of God shining through them. As we think about our moms, I want us to think how we can be influencers for Christ. How can we be the sparkle of the morning dew? Each sparkle is just a tiny drop of water. It's those little things that add up. So don't give up. Keep doing the next right thing and let God shine through it. I have three suggestions for you that you can put into practice. And number one is to smile. 
make sure that you smile, especially when your kids or your grandkids happen to be around. Give them a happy image of yourself. Because if you believe in Christ, you are saved. He died on the cross to wash away all your sins. He put his Holy Spirit in you so that no matter what we go through, he is with us. We don't face it alone. And he gives us the hope of heaven, the glories that are in store for us. We should be smiling. I know that uh, there are times in our interactions with others that we have unpleasant interactions and it's hard to smile. One of the advantages of being in a church for 30 years now is, I, for most of you, I knew your mother. I can picture her smile. I can hear her voice. And I know that for some, I saw the smile more often than you did because in a family we can get into an adversarial kind of relationship, a pattern of remembering the argument of yesterday and carrying it on today. There she goes again. When we have those uh, difficult conversations, remember to keep smiling anyway to be able to pass on something much more important than your own comfort, than your own idea of what would be best. Number two, when you share memories, also share memories of faith. Remember that time when, we're always remembering a time, right? Well, talk about memories of going to church together or Sunday school. What about Vacation Bible School, or remember that song we used to sing? Bring up those thoughts as well, and maybe memories of your own childhood. Who took you to Sunday School? Who shared the gospel with you? How did you grow in faith? What was a song that you sang? Share that. And number three, to work on memorizing a Bible verse. To write it down, post it on the fridge, and when somebody from your family is there, read it out loud and ask them to help you in memorizing it. Let them quiz you on it. Maybe an old familiar, like the 23rd Psalm, that you want to reestablish in there, or maybe something like Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 and 7. Have no anxiety about anything but in all things by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will keep your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. Isn't that a wonderful verse to be carrying inside of you? Have your kids or your grandkids help you memorize it so that they can see you growing in faith, so that they can catch a glimpse of your sincere faith, that your faith is still alive today. May we be an influence for God for a coming generation, not to manipulate them, because nobody likes to be manipulated, and if we are trying to fix them or change their minds or get them straightened out, most likely they're going to resist but we can plant seeds and then trust God to bring those seeds to germinate and grow and bear fruit at the proper time, to plant seeds for him. Let them see your faith. Would you pray with me? Oh God, we thank you for giving us mothers. We thank you for how you invented this world. Oh, so sweet that you put us into families. Lord, may we be part of your sweetness, passing on that goodness. May your light shine upon us so that it might sparkle for those around us. We pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Our closing hymn is, We Are One in the Bond of Love.
praise the Lord, one in the bond of love. I know he said we'll join our hands and uh, someday we will praise the Lord. But for now, we join our hearts that the world will know we are one in the bond of love. May the peace of Christ, which passes all understanding, keep your heart and mind now and always. Amen. Thank you.